Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I hope you are all happy and healthy, doing the things you love with those that you love doing them with. As always, welcome back to Devil's Advocate. This is Devil's Advocate, episode 21. We've got Johnny in. Oh. Dave is on his way, we think. We think he's on his way. I haven't heard from him, but he's apparently supposed to be here at two o'clock, but we're six minutes late. So apologies for the delay. We hope he's going to turn up. And if he does, then we've got the terrible trio back. A trio that Sessi's Gammy Hammy is saying he's not seen a trio this good since Aragorn, <laughs> Legolas, and Gimli. That seems uh, that must be a Lord of the Rings or something. Uh, sorry, uh, is it Lord of the Rings? I think it might be a Lord of the Rings reference. I don't know. I don't watch that stuff, but appreciate it. Fight amongst yourselves who, for who. So I'll take the good looking one. I'll take the good looking one. It's not a problem, you know. <laughs> Lego Lass. I thought Lego Lass was uh, Mikel Arteta. Lego <laughs> <laughs> good to see you, Seth. Mate, before we get into it, I'll, I'll come and speak to the guys in a second. How are you, Johnny? Sorry, mate. It's been remiss of me yeah, to not no, ask I'm, all, I'm all right. I'm all right. I've, I've been suffering with this sciatica. It's been doing my head in, but a um, couple of painkillers and hopefully I'll be on my way. So, uh, yeah. No, other than that, fine. Um, I didn't watch any football um, last night at all. Um, I went out for my son's birthday. Um, so How old was he? Uh, <laughs> And he, uh, we, we, I, I, I did very well. I, 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 I ignored the football. I didn't even watch it when I came back. And sadly, I was almost, you know, I was hoping Wales won. And in some sick, twisted mindset, I was hoping that we lost to Belgium. I'm not Why? sure what it's about. <laughs> I, I, I can't I don't even watch international think. football. What happened? What happened in both games? I don't even know what happened. Well, we, uh, Jude, uh. Bellingham got us out of trouble in the 95th minute, I believe. Okay. Um, and uh, listen, I'm 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 a huge anti uh, Southgate. I, I just think a guy who had one job as a failure. There he goes. Hi, David Boy. In his oh, are we patriotic? Top. That's not very patriotic. <laughs> uh, no, I do apologise about being late. I was just over on uh, Kim and J. Uh, Kate and James channel there. I just finished up, so I'm just on here now. I do apologize. He looks disheveled, did he? What's happened? <laughs> oh, because I'm late. I'm rushing around. That's the problem. Uh, it's all good, mate. It's all good. How are you? You good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited for the for the, for the real football to commence at the weekend. Hopefully, we get the three points on the board. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. How did your team do? You you wearing the Ireland shirt? How did the How did the Irish do last night? Did they play last <sighs> night? They lost. Really? Okay. Yeah, we played Switzerland. Last one nil. We were useless. Okay. Okay, as, and England, 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 North... England just about squeezed through, did they, with a Bellingham winner late on? No, how did draw, Wales do? Did... Draw, draw. Oh, draw. Okay, and how did Wales do? Uh, they lost on a penalty shootout. Unfortunately, the goalkeeper oh. didn't look like he would save uh, a penalty if he'd been there for a month. So uh, really? it didn't look good. It didn't look good for him. It didn't look. I didn't watch any of it. I just saw a couple of the the reports, but that was the one that stood out. Is that kind of like Fraser Forster in the Fulham game? Earlier on this season, when, uh, he, when he could have had a 45, was... 45 penalties and he wouldn't have got down to any of them. No, where the tree was <laughs> falling down and the ball had already passed him by. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> if a tree falls in the forest, does Fulham score a penalty? It's one of those kind of philosophical questions, right? Do you hear the crowd cheer? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's good to see you, boys. Good to have you. Let me just quickly uh, rush through and say hello to everyone. Uh, we sent hello to Cess. Good to see you. Drew Zilla's in the house. Drew Zilla, big up everyone. Looking forward to great Devil's Advocate show. Shoes off, smash the like, double check the sub, and let's go. 100%. Couldn't have said it quicker and better myself. Guys, look, there's something going on with my channel in terms of subs. Every time I get five more subs, YouTube takes them away. I don't know what's going on. It is what it is. You've got to fight through it. So can everyone just make sure that your uh, shoes are off and that the sub button is hit? Keep hitting it, and hopefully YouTube will, will figure it out, essentially. And eventually, uh, Alan's in the house. Good to see you, mate. Good evening. Good morning, Drew. He says not, doesn't say good morning to us. Just says good morning to Drew. Uh, future's bright. Come on, boys. Shake a leg. Yeah, sorry we were late. For, are we Luton supporters now? No, that's in the badge because we're talking about Luton today. That's what we're doing. In a coma's here. Good to see you, mate. Good to see you. Tom Martin's in the house as well. Lovely to see you. Dan Coys, Tom Thacker, PH family. Love it, love it, love it. Daniel Borden uh, in a coma. <laughs> Uh, Stefan Evans, Davies had a goal ruled out by VAR. Apparently, he played really well. We actually got a story about Ben Davies to talk about. 
Um, go back a bit. Go back a bit. There's, I, I saw my name mentioned. It won't. No, keep going. Keep going. You didn't miss uh, Apple, Johnny, oh, England, England versus England Spursy. Spursy. Yeah. And can I just say, it was actually Spurs v Poland. I mean, Spurs were the defence. Joe uh, International rode on and uh, Ben, the hitman Davis, um, at the back. And, of course, we had the internationally recognised uh, striker elite, uh, Brenda Johnson, up front. Unfortunately, none of them could save the day uh, for Spurs. And we turned them all Spurs. <laughs> no, you can't call him Brenda anymore, Johnny. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Brenda. Uh, Brendan, Brendan, Brendan. <laughs> Brendan. Sorry. Brendan. It's all fun and games. Uh, boys, let's get going. Let's get going. Let's. I want to start off with what we're going to talk about, because here's the, here's the sort of uh, layout of the show. We're going to talk about wherever the show goes. I do have five or six different stories that we can bring up should we need to. And at the end, I want to play the kind of top four um, play that the kind of uh, the game where you um, insert all of the predictions just for Man United, Aston Villa and Tottenham to figure out whether we're going to do it or not. But we are 10 games away. We're seven to 17 points away from 70, which traditionally is enough to get you fourth. Obviously, we're 98% certain now that fifth place will also get you Champions League. But I think that there's... I think that's the the, the coefficient rule is. See, I I I, I don't see that. Sorry, I, I'm I I I'm really not seeing that at all. I mean, listen, if Bayern Munich beat Arsenal, right, um, and uh, Real Madrid beat what's the name, and I I definitely think and Leverkusen I'd, are going to go deep in the Europa, aren't they? And beat West Ham, then mm. what are we doing? I'm just. I listen. I. I. I don't. I don't know how it works. I've got no idea how the coefficient yeah. works. I'm just saying. I've, I read an article saying that England are 98 percent certain to get the fifth spot. So daily sport does not count, uh, Sean. You do realize that. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I think it was lower quality than that. I think it was the Sunday sport. If I'm entirely oh, was honest, it, was it? Yeah, yeah. But it, I, I would say it's more like 50 50. You know, okay. I'm not wishing Arsenal to win, but I can't see. Currently, it's weird though, isn't it, Johnny? It's it's one of those things where you kind of you want all the English teams to do well, but not that well. You want them all to get to the semi final and then get beaten by a team from Slovenia or a team from you know yeah. a team that's not going to compete with us on the coefficients. But so that's the thing. Are you are you are you rooting for Arsenal against Bayern? Munich? No, I listen. I, look, I I could never I could never do that. Um, you know, I hope they get embarrassed uh, beyond belief. Um, and Harry Kane is there. <laughs> Uh, uh, to do it, um, I don't know what they're going to do. Will they have to rest players? You know, will they have to feign injury in the league games to make sure they're ready for the cup games? I don't know. What I do no. know is that um, I can't see West Ham beaten by Leverkusen um, on the current mm. form. Um, so I would say, do you know? Do you know? I've got a really sneaking suspicion uh, that could go all the way. I know it's going to be tough for them. Is PSG? I don't know why. Um, because they don't have the big names now, really. Um, well, they've got the biggest name. Well, they've got Mbappe, right? Mm. Cry baby Mbappe. Um, and they've got, uh, good, they've got Usman Dembele, haven't they? Is Usman Dembele over there? Oh, no, he's not, is he? He's a, yeah, he's, but they don't have they don't have the Neymar and the and yeah, the, yeah, and I hear you guy. Say. yeah, yeah, he so uh, hear you. you know, it'd be quite of ironic if on his way out he bought them the uh. The Champions League. We shall see. We shall see anyway. I know we're not in it. So, well, not yet, but hopefully we will be next year. I did a video last night, Dave, uh, that broke down the UEFA uh, prize money. And because of the new system, there's new format, there's new prize money. And I kind of just baked in some, some general kind of rules of thumb that Tottenham, if we did qualify, would get to the last 16. You get money for coefficient points, you get money for TV points, uh, for media money. You get money for obviously prize money throughout the competition, plus your corporate gigs, plus your additional match day revenue. And I kind of did some kind of paperwork on the back of a cigarette packet type thing. Uh, sorry, um, pencil on a cigarette packet type thing. And I think that it's worth about a hundred million to get to it's the last up, 16. It? It's, it's, it's gone, gone up, up by around? about 15, by about 10, 15 percent. The overall prize money has, and but the way it's distributed is slightly different. Um, Dave, just whilst we're talking about the top four race. Top five race, maybe. I don't know if you, are, you know, more familiar with the coefficient points than Johnny or I. But um, do you think we're going to do it? And and how important is it for us to get in there? How important is that hundred million? And I think for what it's worth, hundred million is what you would get if you got to the last sixteen. But just to qualify, just your qualification prize money, 
just the slice of the media money you would get from that, just the additional four games at home will bring in about 50 million quid in additional revenue. How important is it that Tottenham do find a way to finish fifth? Uh, this no, uh, look, I think it's very important. You know, no one expected us to finish, you know, it, you qualify for Champions League this season. And we, we've put ourselves in a position with 10 games to go and it's now up to us to seize the opportunity. I think you qualify for Champions League. I think you see maybe... Uh, a good calibre of signings coming in here compared to if you comp go for the Europa League. I think if you go Europa League or Europa Conference League, um, I, I, I do envisage that you'll probably see a lot more of the youth being kept around and used in them competitions and stuff like that. And, you know, in years gone by, we haven't really took them competitions too seriously. So for me, I, I think it's very important to get Champions League. You get Champions League, Daniel Levy should open the purse strings a little bit more. Um, we should get a higher calibre of signings in here. Plus, you know, I think we'll we, we look to take all competitions seriously then at that point. Because, I don't, you know, in years gone by, we have been in, you know, Europa League and Europa Conference League, and it just hasn't been taken seriously whatsoever. And it's just been pointless. Yeah. Um, I completely agree, guys. Look, so, so we're gonna we are gonna talk about Luton. We are gonna talk about the path to top four, top five towards the end of the show. Just to get going, though, there's a few little bits of news out that I haven't had a chance to get your guys' takes on. Some of it's new, some of it's a couple of days old. Um, so I want to start with obviously if we do if we do uh, finish top four or five, that extra fifty million, hundred million will be very important to get Tottenham some of the areas that we need, and one area is obviously in this six role, right? In this potential six. I don't know how you feel about it. Some of us think we got too many eights, not enough sixes, too, not enough tens. Um, but Pierre Mahoybier has told mm. Tipsbladat, I don't know who they are, uh, that it's only Ange Postacoglu who can explain why the midfielder hasn't been used much this season. I've got some quotes for you. And I want to also just drop in a couple of graphs for you. I want to get your take on, because there's two parts to this qu question. One of them is about um, Hoybier, and that's about Bissouma. Having joined Spurs, yada, 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 where's the quote? On his Tottenham situation, he said, of course I'm not happy with what's going on at the club. It's not a secret, but it's not something I make a fuss about either. I can put on my head, my head on my pillow knowing that I'm giving it my all to show the coach that he should believe in me. This is not the case at the moment, and it's the coach who has to explain why. So pretty, pretty, um, you know, I think there's a bit of a habit right now of Tottenham players... Uh, being happy to kind of talk a little bit too openly about things that maybe should be happening behind closed doors, but we'll, I'll get your take on that. But I just want to, I want to just bake into this. So I did bring up, here's Pierre Mahoybier's. So I put in all of the, all of the different characteristics, uh, the different measurements of what I would consider to be an important number six. Essentially it's your passing range, your passing stats. It's also your, your take-ons, what you're doing with the ball in possession how good you are at switching the play, progressive carries, progressive take-ons, touches, all that stuff. And obviously the defensive stuff, right? The tackle, percentage of dribblers, tackle, tackles one, interceptions. I left off headers because if I added too many more, it would have just clouded the whole thing. But in a nutshell, this is him over the last sort of 365 days. And take note of the minutes, right? 1,737 minutes. So he hasn't played a significant amount in this season, as we know. Neither has Eve Basuma, guys. I know this is a long question, but I want to let you both go with it where you want to go. Here's East Basuma, and East Basuma is getting a lot of pressure from a lot of Tottenham fans, myself included. I have been saying since the season started, he is not the right number six. We need a different six. He's a better eight. And in the first 10 games, I was wrong. Latterly, I think I've been proven right. But when you dial in the stats, this is against the top five leagues across all midfielders in the top five leagues. And this is East Basuma. 99th to 95th percent percentile for every passing stat that you could want bar progressive carries, which he isn't exactly lacking that much in. He's also right up there in the top two or three percentile for tackling players. And he's also right up there in terms of carrying the ball, breaking the press, doing the press resistance stuff. And so my question to you guys, and I'll start with you, Dave, is... First of all, is Pierre Mahoybier out of order for saying what he's saying, for asking, for calling out the manager? Second of all, is the answer why he's not playing baked into the stats? And thirdly, is Eves Basuma really the problem that a lot of Tottenham fans think he is? Um, look, firstly, on the quotes, I mean, I personally, I do think it's a bit bang out of order. I think he's given context maybe to why he's not playing. 
Uh, I do respect the fact that he says he's not happy. It's no secret around the club, but he's not making a fuss about it either. I think you can see that, you know, when he is asked to come on and stuff like that, he still gives his all. Um, but, you know, to say go and ask the manager, I think, you know, he's sort of... I, I think he's gone at the end of the uh, at the end of the season. I think that's why he's coming out and saying these things. Personally, you know, if 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 he if there was plans to keep him around beyond this summer, um, you know, he wouldn't be saying this. I think they've already had the discussions. I think he's told Tottenham he wants to leave, and I think Tottenham are probably happy enough to let him leave. Um, so I, th I, th I think our our affinity with Pierre and Hoiberg is is probably coming to an end off the back of them quotes. I don't like players coming out, you know, putting manager under the bla on the blast and on pressure like that. At the end of the day, Ange Postacoglu has already probably explained these reasons to pierre Emil Hoiberg behind the scenes on why he's not playing. I, 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 I don't think that Hoiberg hasn't been told why he's not playing. And he strikes me as a guy that would be in the manager's office asking him why. So I think that probably shows to me that it's all coming to an end. In terms of Basuma, Look, Basuma is a good player. He's an all right player when he's on it. But the problem is how often we don't see the consistency to that game week in, week out. And maybe the part of that is is because you don't have a player behind him really, you know, pushing at his heels, chomping at the bit. If you did, maybe you'd see Basuma be a lot more confident. But with Basuma, he's limited in terms of he can dribble the ball, he can tackle the ball. He doesn't. He, he can't spray passes around, which means when he gets the ball, we always have to play it, play it true. At some, what I would like to come in here is a guy that has a, a good passing range from deep, a deep lying playmaker. That's when teams do press us in the middles, we have the option we can hit Werner in behind. You can hit Johnson or Sonny or that in behind from a deep position. Even when teams sit low block, you can get the ball to that deep lying playmaker and get him to start making different passes, expanding the play, not giving opposition a chance to turn the ball over in that regard and stuff like that. So for me, I think that's where Basuma lacks, and I think that's where we should be looking at for the number six, someone with that passing range and a deep lane playmaker to give you that different option. Because when it hasn't worked with Basuma at times, what has Hoiberg been good at and what has people praised him for? When he's come on and he's got a lot of time and space on the ball, he's the one pinging them passes around the place. Um, mm. And I think that's the sort of option we need in behind Basuma. Yeah, I love that. Johnny, I mean, the stats do tell us a certain story that he's up there with the... And this, those stats bake in they, Basuma. They bake in his first early season form and his latterly dips, right? So imagine if you could just see the 10 games in the first, how good they would look. It can't get much better. But I, I just... Listen, stats are great, but they're only part of the story. You know, it's like seeing a beautiful woman say she's stunning, but it's only part of the story because deep down she's a flipping fruitcake, right? Um... <laughs> You know, it's it's you know. They're gonna get me cancelled, man. No, but I mean, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, the facade, like, it's not. You need to scratch deeper beyond the surface to I find I the true I depth of what it is. Look, for me, I think uh, Hoybier gets too much disrespect. You know, three years didn't miss a game. You know, I think mm. he missed one, two games in three years. Um, you know, he's a warrior. He's a fighter. He's a leader. Right, you see him on the pitch, you know, gym people up. And I've got to say, you know, the interesting thing is, as little game time as he's had this season, quite often you can hear Ange, uh, especially the early part of the season, where post game report he mentions um, Hoybier coming on and being the common influence on, on, on the team. And I've got mm. to say, when he came on against Fulham at 3 0, I saw him. Like like this, you know, lift them up. Come on, you know, fight. This is a guy. This is a guy who's a hundred percent professional. I actually believe if you took him out right now, we would expose our soft underbelly. And I believe we have a really soft underbelly, and that really needs to be addressed um, in the summer because he is a leader off the pitch, right? He's a leader on yeah. the pitch, and we. Need I can't to imagine. I can't even see. I can't see him the sort of guy. That does his four hours on the training ground and then goes home and plays FIFA. For no, no, he's, no, 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 no. Like, this, this guy, look, I, I don't care what anyone says, right? I see how he plays for Denmark. He's very much respected out in Denmark. He, you know, he plays a more progressive role out there, creates goals, scores goals. Um, you know, and if the problem is, though, no, Johnny, he's not mobile enough uh, for no, for an no. Yeah, no, listen, I, look, I, I, I'm. There's a caveat to it, right? There's a caveat to it. Um, I, 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 I just think that this system doesn't suit a Hoybier. 
I don't think this system suits a lot of players. I've got to be brutally honest, because when I look at it, you know, this system is exposing everybody. It's exposing the midfielders. It's exposing the defenders. I've been through this, but we've had this on Devil's Advocate before. If I was mm. to look like for like across that back five that we have, including the keeper, we are way ahead of where we were in talent compared to last year. Yet we are conceding goals hand over fist. Is our midfield better than it was last year? I believe so. And yet again... Right. But Johnny, on that and, one, just, just make yeah. Devil's Advocate, we are... Uh, and I know the the answer to all of the concerns is um, we're only six months in. But in terms of or eight months in, in terms of the the fact that we do have a better back five than we've ever or we've had since the days of you know Lloris and and um, Alderweireld and Matongan, I completely agree. And it's probably one of the best back fours consistently in the one, league. Two, three, four, in the league. So so the fact that we're conceding as many goals as West Ham or, or Fulham is is a cause for concern on paper. But but is it but is it is it is it really though, Sean? This is my point I'm trying to make here. Look, we are looking to expose Bissouma. We're looking to expose Hoybier. We know Hoybier is not as mobile. So that for therefore this system exposes him far more than it would do in right. a Mourinho system or a Conte. Only when you get transition quickly though. This is the thing yeah. that those stats, those stats don't show about Bissouma. I'll let you come in, I'll let you come in now, Dave. That those those stats don't show what happens when Bissouma progresses the ball. He'll get a tick for progressive carries, but he he it won't be registered when he gets dispossessed mm -hmm. and then you've got nobody protecting. I just Can think I in in 7 months that you need to in order to judge that back four and whether it's capable of defending it, I think you have to at least allow the full year no, to be baked in, in terms also, of There was an interview that Ange Postacoglu gave uh, uh, last month where he spoke about not everyone in this squad is profiles of what he needs for his system. He spoke right. about looking at players across every position. You know, no one's safe at the minute. There's, you know, they don't have the mobility and stuff that he would like. Once we start getting more of that, I do think you will see a general sort of improvement. I mean, he wants a team of yeah. uh, uh, of Gallagher's, basically, who, you know, chase, chase, chase. Uh, I mean, look, look. I, I'm just going to say on Basuma, OK? Jack Russell's everywhere, yeah? Yeah, Jack Russell's <laughs> nipping at your legs, right? Look, at Lille, Basuma was that progressive, that progressive midfield, OK? Taking free kicks, scoring goals, a really interesting player. You know, when Brighton signed him, I thought, wow, what a player they've got. And what he did... He turned him into a more defensive midfielder because he suited the system that he had, right? And yeah. he changed he changed how he was, okay? Um, and when we signed him, I thought we were going to get this hybrid version of the two. You know, a combination of this progressive attacking Lil uh, midfielder and the, the defensive mindset of, of what um, had been uh, put together at Brighton. I was a bit alarmed... In fact, angry when Conte turned round come September and he hadn't played a minute saying he can't play yet. He doesn't understand our system. And I'm thinking to myself, hang on a minute. This is a 26 year old international footballer who's played right. at highest level. What do you mean he can't understand the system? How complicated can the system be that he doesn't understand? And I blamed it on Conte. Right. I would now fast forward wind and I would say that I can see in some of the recent performances, I, I can saying. understand what Conte was getting at. And I, yep. I was very against this because... Good footballer I, that doesn't have, doesn't have the, the ability to adapt very quickly to new things. Maybe a little bit lacking up here. Yeah, I, I get just it. think yeah. that there are moments within the game, right, where his football brain lets him down. I don't okay. doubt he has ability. I don't doubt he possesses the physical attributes, but you have to combine them with a football brain in that moment. And we've seen many times... There's a few players like that. It's not just Basuma. There's a few No, no, there. it's not just Basuma. But, we, you know, we're, we're, he's been bought up. So, yeah. I, I look, I, I, I think he's a valuable squad player. Um, but um, if we could get him to, to perform um, as he was in the first few games of the season, great. But I do think we need depth. Um, and we desperately need a number six. If you're going to get rid of Hoybier, we need a strong, tough... We need leaders out there. I, Do you know I, what's I interesting, though, Johnny? So I, I'm building a video right now of the top 10 um, midfielders that Tottenham could 
target this year, this summer. And it's, it includes some of the players that we're linked with and some players yeah. that we're not, but we should be in my opinion. But as I was doing the, the research on the video, I'm starting to put it together. This is where the Basuma stats came from. I was like, Oh my God, he actually statistically, he looks better on paper than all of these players. But these players that I'm looking at, I obviously have gone and done the more of a kind of fine tuned detail. And I think that statistics are going to, confuse the situation a little bit where I, I want to ask you guys a question though about what Dave said regarding Angie's interview and what you're both saying Johnny you agree that we need number six there's horses for courses some people find it difficult to adapt and I'm going to ask the question in 10 seconds before I do there's 270 people here guys it costs absolutely nothing this channel is is um struggling a little bit at the minute in terms of trying to get a, a cat list and a subscriber growth. So I'm really would hope and uh, appreciate it. If you guys can help me out by hitting the like button on the video, hitting the subscribe if you haven't already, and also getting into the description, hitting the links for Johnny's uh, Twitter profile and Dave's uh, Irish Hotspur channel. I'll be putting the links in in a second. It costs nothing to help these, these two out and that costs nothing to help me out as well. Don't need super chats. Just need the support in, in the form also, of Also, comments, comments. You know, whether you yeah. agree with uh, me uh, and, and Dave, obviously you don't agree with Sean, that's, that's a given. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no. Yeah, but get no, the comments look, in as well. Smash the comments, get guys. Comments, get, get comments in as well. Get comments in as well. So the question I was going to ask you both is, and Johnny, I'll start with you, is if what Dave is saying, re re referencing Angie's interview, that there's lots of players that he doesn't necessarily think, you know, are the perfect fit, do you want me to bring up the quote, Sean? Yeah, if you've got it, it'd be great. It'd be great to bring it up. Um, yeah, give me one second. Okay. Um, the question I was going to ask, we'll, we'll get the quote when it comes, but Johnny, the question I was going to ask is if the quote we're going to see now is telling a story that essentially there's players that we might like, that we might rate as, as footballers, but that Ange doesn't think it fits his system, similar to how Liverpool cashed in on Coutinho and then went about doing new things with Alisson and with Van Dijk, is there any player that's off limits to you that, that if Ange thinks, you know what, I want to sell these players and bring in someone else, even if it means bringing in players that you might not necessarily agree with, are you on board with Ange to the point where, hey, let me get this, this quote up. He's brought the quote up. Uh, is it, clearly I, think we'll look, I think we'll look to strengthen all areas of the park come the end of the season, said Poster Coglu. Wow. That's planning that's already underway and other people yeah. are in charge of it at the moment. Wow. I haven't seen this. We've yeah. got a lot of work yeah. to do a lot. Of work to, 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 I've got a lot of work to do on the squad. I don't think we're anywhere near where we want to be. It will probably take a little bit more than three windows to get there for sure. Just in terms of the robustness, adaptability and compatibility of the squad. I think there's still a fair bit of change we need to do. Holy shit. I haven't seen this. Yeah. So, so how yeah. does that, how does that, how does that, Cheers, how, does for that that up. Do, how does that work for squad morale when your agent's reading that, you're reading that, and that gets fed back into the team, right? Um, because that sounds to me like a general, complete overhaul uh, of, of the team. Does that inspire it also you? Might, it also might mean, leading to the question I was going to ask you, Johnny, is it also might mean that there might be players that he rates, like a Brennan Johnson for his system, that maybe Tottenham fans don't. And there might be players in there that Tottenham fans think are, you know, set in stone that he thinks, actually, you're not a good fit for what I need. So in order for us to really be on board it and board him, we have to trust him, his vision, his philosophy, and then be okay with any really significant decisions that he makes this summer. Are you going to be okay with that, Johnny, if he makes I, some really I'm really not big 100%. Calls? I've got to be honest with you because I believe no no manager, no player is bigger than the club. And what i just a little bit concerned about is that Ange stamps his authority so much so that he will sign the players he wants and that is it, right? Now, what is his historic background in signing these incredible players? What 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 is, you know, are we looking at Kygo? Are we looking at a couple of others at Celtic? We no, but he knows the profile, right? He might I not have had know, access I, to the I talent. But he's, profile, yeah. yeah, but profile. Look, he often refers to the fact that I will let the people who are good at their job do their job, i.e. Uh, Lange or Fabio and, uh, and others. My point is, if it's a situation whereby 
um, Fabio, say, for example, says, look, I've got four or five um, players in that position. All of them are good for what you want. And he picks one of those five. I don't have a problem with that. What I have maybe a problem with is when he turns around and says, I don't want any of those. I want him over there. And then we sign him and it doesn't work out. I don't want to be in a situation whereby, you know, he leaves us in 18 months and we've got another situation. We've got a pile of players that only suit Ange Ball, right? I'm just thinking, I think like I'd like a balance. Well, that's a commitment where... though, right? If no, he's gonna no, make no, wholesale no. chart, if he's finish. gonna make wholesale changes in his vision, yeah, then you I have to get you have to give him three, four I... years to let that play out. So right? so I just let me just finish up there, right? It's just like what I'd like to see is that 80% is given to Ange and 20% is given to the development teams looking for players who they think will develop into the players that maybe Ange doesn't see for the long-term good of the club, right? Because these players, when you're buying players at 18, you know, at 21, he could be gone. When that player hits 21, that player, they, they could be yeah. gone. So, I, I, I do believe we it's must have a balancing that in. act, isn't it? It's a balancing, it's a balancing act. act. I don't want him to have carte blanche on absolutely every single signing that comes to the club. When I look at Bren, Brennan Johnson, um, no, I, 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 I've got nothing against Brennan Johnson. No, no, I'm not because I thought you were about to say Brenda. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I've got nothing against him. But when I look at the when I look at the fact that so much work has been done with unbelievable purchases from Fabio at the cost they have been. And then suddenly Daniel Levy, out of all character, spends £12 million on a player that was already... Uh, I mean, Brentford agreed £35 million, uh, for uh, for Brennan Johnson. And Daniel Levy went out and paid £47 million. No, right? no Brentford didn't agree it. Brentford offered it. It's different. Yeah, and, they, and they accepted it. No, they he didn't. didn't want to go. They did. Have a look. Read it up. They did. That's not the story I read. Okay. Well, anyway, it's irrelevant. But yeah. But okay. my point here is, my point yeah. here is, he needs to be backed, right? But I'd like it to be a, a, a collab. But we, I, I think we're all in agreement here. We we probably need about six or seven players in the summer. Well, I didn't. I'd, I'd never seen that quote until Dave brought it up, and. I'm actually quite astonished. I mean, that's significant changes. I was thinking we were putting in the last pieces of the puzzle, but it yeah. sounds like that's not the case. Dave, let me let me get your take, mate. I mean, thank you for showing that to me. I've mean, not seen it. That's crazy. That deserves an entire video by itself, to be honest. <laughs> so that's what's coming out for you guys here tomorrow on Shire's first talk show. <laughs> but you know what? Go and read the rest of the article, Sean. It's very, it's it's very interesting. Um, football, London, go through each position. You know, potential what what could happen around some of the players around the squad, and maybe put some names forward that potentially Spurs are have been interested in and are interested in and being linked to. It's a very good article. Um, if mm. people just type in Tottenham summer transfer plans, it'll come straight up. Um, but look, when it comes to what Pastor Coglu was saying, I can understand it. And there are players, Oli Skip, he doesn't suit the system. He's never going to get into the Ange Pastor Coglu no. field. I agree with everything that Johnny said on Hoiberg. The problem is, Hoiberg doesn't have the legs to get around the midfield and cover the ground in, at quite quick distance to where Pasta Coglu needs it to. Um, ben Davies is no longer going to fit the system based off that. Not mobile enough, not good enough. Um, Emerson, maybe you throw that in. Uh, maybe you keep and bring someone else in, move Porro into a position where he can go and affect games using his best abilities and stuff like that. But I'm actually not too concerned off the courts. With what Johnny was saying, I think... Ange Post, like Scott Munn came out and done an interview there not so long ago. He said that the, the club and the management are on the same uh, as, same process of thought and stuff like that. And I would I would think that, you know, Posta Coglu says, right, these are the attributes, this is what I'm looking for in a player. What's the data saying? They come back with a list of players. Who do you want? I'd say that's the way it goes. Um, but I, I would trust the recruitment process. You look at the majority of signings, okay, we're not too happy with Brennan Johnson. Van der Ven has been a revelation. Vicario has been absolutely brilliant. You know, um, Madison, despite me being frustrated with him, you know, we needed a player of that calibre and stuff like yeah. that. So a lot of the signings we have made have been good. You know, I can't I can't, I can't deny that. Oh, 100%. But if we want to get to the point and we want Ange Ball, you know, to, to be in full effect the way it has been at other clubs and stuff like that, 
you have to give them the rest of the pieces of the squad to be able to do that. And what we need to be looking at in players is more the mobility. And that's something I've looked at. He got rid of Hugo Lloris, was gone. Vicario came in. Vicario is a lot more mobile than what Hugo Lloris ever was. Um, you know, same with Van Is that not why, I knew, is that why Fraser Foster's not the right guy for backup, right? 100%. Potentially 100%. not, no, potentially not. And I do think you'll see, uh, Vicario actually went and watched Keeley there not so long ago for Barnet. There's a strong interest around Vicario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually signed an extension to his contract that went under the radar as well. So it looks like potentially he'll end up coming through as a number two at some point. But I actually like where we're going because what I'm seeing now on the football pitch is a team that is mobile enough to compete in the Premier League compared to years gone by where a lot of the players weren't mobile enough. They were slow. They were slow at turning, you know, not, not technically good enough and stuff like that. We are moving into an era, more recruitment off to what we've already done. We'll have a very solid squad, so I'm not too concerned about it. But, you hey, know, let I, me ask I just you, brought um, that up because I do see I just... a lot around. Just quickly, I brought that yeah. up because I do see a lot around Ange Postacoglu. But, you know, I think we ignore some of the words that he does say. You know, he's telling you how many transfer windows it's going to be. He's telling you what he needs in the summer, basically yeah. what attributes he's looking for, people that are mobile and all that other stuff. Right. But one thing that puts me in safe hands is Posta Coglu will only work with good characters. He said mm -hmm. it. he wants to work with players that are at their, want to be at their best every single day, day in, day out. So even if he does leave, further on down the process, at least we're left with a bunch of good players that are mobile good enough to be able to compete at this level. Can I just... Can I just... Sorry. I just wanted to add okay, something because, yeah. I just, because it was misconstrued, right? I'm not saying that we haven't made good signings because we have. We've made some fantastic mm, signings. Mm. I'm just offering the balance here between yeah, Fabio's know. unbelievable, fantastic signings and giving... I just worry that I don't want us to give carte blanche to everything that Ange wants as far as a player, because I don't see, looking back on his history, where he's been... This That's not right. why you have a director of football, though, Johnny. The Guru. director of football tends to look yeah. at the squad long-term and the he then has to fit the right will profile he be manager happy with that? to come in and will, work with the vision. Will he be... You see, this is the thing, is, is will Ange be happy? Because he wants the control. Will he be happy um, to... Uh, to, I don't to know if he does want the control, though. I think I think he it comes across to me, and again, that statement yeah. I haven't seen, but everything I've read before comes across to me as though he moves from club to club. He doesn't take a coaching staff with him. He's very malleable. He trusts what's offered to work with him. He, he can instill his vision upon you know, UEFA A class coaches or whatever they're called, yeah. A bad closes uh, coaches, and say, "This is what I need from you. Can you please instill it?" I think personally that someone who has such a very specific system probably should have a very specific set of coaches that he trusts. It's very unusual for a manager of this caliber at this level to go from pillar to post, from club to club. And you then don't just... have Celtic though. He didn't bring a huge team. With I know. I, know. I, I, I get it. I hear you. I'm just saying, I just feel like it's unusual, but in, in any event, I don't think that he is. I think that he, he he's probably having conversations even though he said in the past, I don't speak too often, too frequently with uh, the likes of Paratici, but I'm sure he's he's got that kind of. They're on the same page to some degree in what the in what the first team ready talent ID looks like. But my question is back to you guys. And I, again, I, I, Dave, I want I'll let you sort of finish it because I, I do want to come back to this particular point. Is and then Johnny, I'll come back to you. If Ange said. If reading between the lines with what he's saying there, that we've got some players that are not a good fit, there's lots of work still to do. If he was to turn around and say, for example, that Rodrigo Bentoncourt is not a good fit for my system, right? Or Pierre or Hoybier. I think everyone might be okay with Hoybier leaving. I know Queen Ellie's in the house and I'm sure she wouldn't be, but I think <laughs> a lot of people would be okay. We're seeing him move on. And I love Hoybier and I want him to go on and be a brilliant player and do what, you know, get his career to the level that he, could, he should be. But let's say someone that's got a bit more um, of a fan, a fan love, a fan love affair, a love affair, which is a Benson call. We got a song about him. If, if, if Pierre, Mo if, uh, if Ange said someone like him is not a good fit, a wonderful player, but he doesn't fit any particular role that I need. In that environment, do you trust Ange with the decision of saying, I want to get this guy in, a Conor Gallagher, 
but there's not enough space. We've got too many eights. Therefore, you can let Hoybier go. You can also let Benton call go. Are you okay with Ange making that call, Dave? Yep. Are we ever supposed to make progress if you don't give a manager and give it give him the trust that he needs? He's already done it. He's got rid of Dyer. Everyone used to stand in the stands. We love Eric Dyer. Eric Dyer loves me. He's gone. Sanchez, another one. You know, a lot of fans out there for Sanchez. He had no problem letting him go. Harry Kane, he let him go in the summer as well. You know, he could have went to Levy and said, oh, by all means, you do not let him go. My project is sent around that. He never done it. You know, and you've got people like me who are Kane stands. So he's already let a lot of fan favourites go already. And for me, you know, you've got to trust trust it. You know, if, if I go back to Man City when Guardiola first came in, you know, it didn't go well at the first season, but they backed it, they trust it. They let him get rid of, they let him sort of phase Aguero out, you know, and stuff like that. You look at uh, Jurgen Klopp when he came into Liverpool, look at Arteta when he came into Arsenal with a Boomiang fan favourites and stuff gone like that. At the end of the day, you have to get behind a manager. You have to trust the process. And if he deems a player isn't good enough for his system, well, he's the one that lives or dies by that later on in the system when the repercussions come in, when he has to use them in the press mm. conferences and stuff like that. And then he gets attacked by fans. Why are you playing this guy, blah, 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 and everything else when he doesn't want him here? We we can't keep doing this. You know, with Conte, Jose, and other managers in the past, we've gone so far of, of trying to implement their system, but said, hang on, you also have to work with a lot of these guys and they ain't going anywhere. And look how it ended. So at some point, you have to let a manager do it and you have to trust it. If he gets a player go, look, I, I, I'm at the, they already let Harry Kane go, so there's no player they can let go now that, that will make me throw my toys out the pram. Okay. I think managers, I think managers, there have been managers, I mean, look at someone like Jose Mourinho, who let Kevin De Bruyne go, who let Mohamed Salah go, you know, who had problems with Lukaku, you know, like, so, you, you know, you can, you can look at managers who have been given the power ultimate power and have messed up right all i'm saying here is i'm not saying we shouldn't back him because we should back him i just think like i said sean there should no, be a balance. i like no i want to hear the devil's yeah. the other, the other side there of the should point, be yeah. a balance in my opinion between giving the manager uh, uh, letting him play but having having a meeting yeah i understand and you want that player but this player has weaknesses our boys have been scouting him and he doesn't have this this there yeah but i like him now if he says, yeah, but I like him and they're going to buy him anyway and not listen to any of think that the scout and the, and the guys who that's their job are saying, yeah, I have a little bit of a problem with that. But I'm like with Dave, if we're upgraded, look, it's obvious. 66th minute, OK, we're three nil down. He takes off Madison. Now. They have a fit Giovanni Lo Celso, right? You bring him on 66 minutes to replace Madison. The game's not lost 66 minutes. We've all seen it before. It can happen, right? One goal, but it's two goals. We're there at Brighton. Oh, wait, against Fulham, we had two, we had two guilt-edged chances in two minutes. Right. We so it three two with 20 minutes to go. But what Very did he do? On. But what did he do? He bought him on on the 88th minute. Yeah, now, I what know. message yeah. does that send to Gio, right? And then he goes out to uh and maybe he's one of those maybe maybe he's one of those players that he's talking about the but where Dave's point was Angie's always talking about personality, people that want to be here that are fighting. Well, for it's him. all right. I, I happen to know he's he, he's fine with the squad. The, the, all these stories have gone past, he's had a baby, and all the rest of it changes you. My point here, I'm trying to make oh, Gio, he did Celso, he's happy now, yeah. is he? Yeah, yeah. But what okay. I'm what I'm well, saying eight to years is, down the line, thank you. Yeah, but he's <laughs> listen, he didn't play. listen, Dave. Come on, mate. Right. The systems, none of those systems work for him. What I'm trying to say here is that it's obvious that Ange and him, even though he is the player to replace Madison in an injury, he won't play him. Now, is that stubbornness or is that the fact that he don't well, he like play him. him? He played him when he was fit. Gio wasn't fit. He was injured. He was fit. He was fit for the Fulham game. He was fit for the Fulham oh, game. Oh, for the Fulham game. But other parts, when he when Gio had no, his no, chance no, during the season, he was I, injured. He wasn't fit. I'm, and that's I'm, been the I'm story sure. of Gio Fernandez Le Salso at Tottenham. Listen, I'm not going to say he hasn't been injured. And Gio but... only stayed around because Endon Belly was acting the prick in preseason. That's why Endon Belly didn't stay around ahead of him. It's picking the best out of a bad bunch. But realistically, next season, he ain't going to be here. He offers nothing. Right. Well, I, let's, let's beg to differ that he, he can offer nothing. But my point is, my point I'm trying to make here is, is that obviously Ange has identified him. We've also seen Brian Gill can't even get on the subs bench and Dane Scarlett will be ahead of him, right? So that's obviously a statement that however good you are. So Ange is not this sort of like, you know, uh, lightweight. 
it's very obvious what he likes and what he doesn't like. And, um, you know, I think we're right. I think we're looking at Gio. I think we're looking at Oliver Skip. I think we're looking at Hoy Bier and, 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 and Tangangas and the Rodons and, and, and the like, who will be shifted out the door. We don't have any problem with that. Is there potentially, though, Johnny, in those words, that, that, that in those words from, from, from Anne, is there any, is there any uh, chance that what he's really referring to is a player that is a fan favourite, regular starter? Could well be. Could well be. And I already I don't mentioned think... Benson Corr, but maybe Richarlison, maybe a Romero, maybe a... <laughs> Very likely I mean, Richarlison. Maybe a, God forbid somebody else, you know, Son? someone like a his contract's up, coming up. Maybe yeah. a Sonny. Oh no, listen, over over Daniel Levy's body, right? Right. Last, right. Um, but my point here is is that I don't think the fans will have an issue, but we don't want to see, for example, if you get rid of Rich Allison and you uh you sign Mr. No Name, right, as a replacement, fans are gonna be pissed off, right? But well, that's the that, that's 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 the arching question, right? Do you trust Ange? Yes or no? Not to you guys, but like well, the, the overall. Because if 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 you do, because you know, Johnny, how many times over the last two months have we done the devil's advocate, <laughs> right? And I've had to cut. I've had to face. I've had to block people in the comments. I've had yeah. to delete comments because of the horrendous commentary that people like yourself and Pete have received on different shows for having a slightly glass half empty approach. I've had to like run a lot of the comments wouldn't have been seen in because they would have been filtered immediately, but vile stuff about, you know, people yeah. that have been on the channel. I deleted it because these guys are like, you can't, listen, I accept absolutely zero. We're not. Ange out, We're not of Ange. That's, that's the narrative. And yet if what Ange is really saying here is there's a lot of Tottenham players that I actually don't want us, I, I think that we could improve on, then will that test the kind of, the 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 love affair with Ange if he says, get rid of Benson Corp, bring me Conor Gallagher? Well, I think, I think, look, the thing is, I think this Spurs fan base now are now at a stage where the FFP's all in place, the stadium's all in place, the money's coming in thick and fast, right? It's time to pay up and bring us the big names and the, the names that the fans want. And if you're going to get rid of Richarlison and you're going to bring up bring in Ixac, right, from uh, from Newcastle, and you're going to bring in another big name and you're going to bring in a big midfielder, the fans can cope with that. What they don't want to see is selling their yeah. star name and bringing in somebody because they're deemed cheap or there might be a deal mm -hmm. in it. That That's what they don't want. I just think now... You know, we've got the basis of this team right. OK, when you look at the injuries that we've had and that run of four, five games where we lost four and drew one, our season could look very different from that patch. And that was all down to two injuries. We're not, I'm not Ange out, but I'm not going to sit there and say, I think everything's rosy in the garden. For my mind, he's, right. coming, to, he's coming to the Premier League, right? He does not... He is not an elite manager as we speak. I hope he becomes. Well, he's, that he's, elite he's more of an elite manager than Mikel Arteta. Mikel Arteta's won one FA Cup three weeks into his reign. Ange Postacoglu has won everywhere he's gone. And so, to play devil's advocate, here's the question: A day, but in I'll, minor leagues. Oh, okay, but he's only, you can only win what's in front of you and beat what's no, in I'm front just of you. The, the, the level of what the point I'm trying to make here is is that. When you're testing yourself in Asia and when you're testing yourself in Scotland, I'm not disrespecting Ange. I'm just, what I'm saying is when you come into the Premier League and it is full of elite managers, OK, you can't expect that you've suddenly know, you've yeah, discovered a new way of football that is going to change everything. And these elite managers have got no answer to Ange Ball. They have and they will. I hear you. I hear and that's you. when you have to adapt. And that's how we'll see next season how we adapt. Just the same as Kulu came in and no one understood his game. They worked him out and that's why his second and third season had been a little bit more difficult. No, I, listen, I hear, you, I hear you on that. I do hear you on that. And I, I'm going to round off this particular conversation um, in a second because I've got a super chat or two to get through. And then I've got Let's a get a poll in the chat as well on this on this topic. I need to put a poll in. I, I, I'll ask you a question. Check, yeah. I'll ask you, yeah, I'll put the poll in in a second. I think that's I very it. apt after they knocked out Wales, getting a poll in. 
<laughs> Inconsiderate. To the world. Inconsiderate. Yeah. Um, Dave, let me ask you this, though, right? When you factor in the fact that Ange's tenure as a manager everywhere he's been has been two years, and when you factor in the reality mm. that the average tenure for Premier League managers is getting shorter and shorter, Tottenham themselves haven't had a, a manager since Pochettino that's lasted more than a season, <laughs> even if you are 100% behind Ange, even if you are someone who is the advocate of the devil that says you can't judge his system, even if we think it's predictable and it's one-track-minded, you can't judge it until he's got the, the pieces of the, the jigsaw or the, the chess pieces the way he yeah. wants them. Even if you are on board with all of that, is there a massive risk of signing four, like selling players that are fan favourites this season if he thinks that they're not a good fit and buying players that he thinks are a good fit on four and five year contracts Correct. just for him to probably leave? Not saying he will leave, not saying he wants to leave, but the stats would suggest that he won't be here by the time that those players' contracts are any, even 50% of the way through. Is there a concern around trusting Ange with the keys in that environment? Um, Look, for me, no. The reason why I say that is, you look at his career to get to the Premier League, the reason why it was two years most places is because it's a stepping stone towards the Premier League. You know, now that he's at the Premier League, he's the fifth best boundaries behind Jurgen Klopp, Arteta, um, the Aston Villa guy, Unai Emery, and Guardiola. I mean, so the rest ain't that 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 great, are they? If they're not ahead of him, and it's his first season coming in, so it proves that his tactics, you know, trump a lot of the other teams below that. And I'd argue against the big teams, we've actually done very well this season as well. Now it's just about filling out that squad and giving him players that he has more faith in. He has more faith in players. You probably see him impact games a lot more with his substitutions during games if he has faith on the players that he's bringing off the bench and stuff like that. Um. I think now that he's arrived at Tottenham, from Tottenham, where else can he go? Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, uh, Man City or Liverpool? You know, Liverpool. at this moment in... At this moment in time, Liverpool would be the obvious one because he's a boyhood Liverpool fan. Jurgen Klopp's on his way out and stuff like that. But if Liverpool don't come calling, for me, he's in it for the long haul. And I don't think Tottenham would have brought him in for another, you know, a, another little stint because they already know fans are getting pissed off with it. They already know that's part of the problem why you're here. You haven't gone fully under one manager to give him what he needs and really go for it. Yes, it's a gamble, but Arsenal done it. It's paying off. Man City done it. It's paying off. Liverpool done it. It's paying off. The reason why they've done it is because they brought in a guy they believe in. The true question this summer will be true to signings. How much do they really believe in Ange Postacoglu? But for me, you look at where we were last season, down in the dungeons. Fans hated the squad. The squad hated the players because they were getting yeah. on their back. There was no love between them. We had three three different managers in the dugout. There was turmoils behind the scenes, stuff like that. We lost our star striker over the summer, you know. Um, he's come in, he's brought in a style of football that has kept the majority of fans happy for large parts of this season. Yes, there's been some ups and downs. You should never lose to Brighton 4 0. You should never lose to Fulham 3 0 and stuff like that. But in the first season, even under Klopp, under Guardiola, under Arteta, there's been, you know, ups and downs in all them seasons. But when you when, when, when you fill out the squad underneath them with more players of for their system that suit it, look at the benefits. And that's where we've gone wrong. We haven't took that leap of faith. And that's what we need to do. And I think that we're at, uh, it's at a point where it doesn't really matter whether us fans believe in Andrew or not, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. The board have the ultimate decision on that. It's up to them to decide. Do they fully believe in him? And are they going to take that gamble? You know, it's 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 always going to be a gamble, no matter what manager you bring in here. But I definitely know bringing in a manager and only going half-hearted under him, need him of proven evidence under Conte, under <laughs> Jose Mourinho and stuff like that. It's not the answer and it only ends in one way because they end up walking out of this club bloody frustrated because they haven't got what they've needed and they've only gone half-hearted. So it's now up to the board. It really doesn't matter what us fans think because they're going to do what they want to do anyway. So it's up to them to decide. Listen, I got to say, just to add here, right? Um, you're a hundred percent spot on. You yeah, know, on, our man. job here is to analyze and look at the stuff, right? I, no one here can disagree that we've improved massively over last season. Mm. I mean, I hated going to see Spurs last season. I felt like it was like it was self harming every game, right? But I went because I'm a fan. This season, you know, as you say, we've lost Kane. You know, we've got new players, changing goalkeeper, changing back line. yeah. Everything, right? And, you know, um, I thought we'd finish fifth or sixth at the start of the season. But this, 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 when you zoom out, as Sean likes to say, and look at the bigger picture, we would have grabbed this with both hands. 
But there would be no show if we sat here and just pretended that, you know, there, there is nothing to answer for. There are no bumps along the road or there are no potential issues. All I'm saying here is back Ange, but don't back him 100 percent because I need that caveat of if he does go or, you know. He will go, is, though. He will go, go, Johnny. Yeah. I don't care. Even if he wins That's the league, saying. even if he wins the league for Tottenham next year. He yeah. will not be here Correct. by the time that the contracts of the players that he will sign for his system expire. He won't yeah. be here for seven years. He never has. It's such, it's a rarity. Yeah, in but we're assuming that Andrew's walking and saying, I want this player. That ain't happening. We brought in a data-led scouting department. Andrew's saying if the profile of the player he wants, and they'll come back to him with five or six players, what one do you want off this? That that's what is happening. He ain't going to the board and saying, "I want this player. And I don't want anyone else." He, he, other managers have done that. Look how that turned out. That is not happening. It's not. I happening. mean, Ange, Ange did say, you know, he 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 stated very openly that he believes that you should move on. He, you know, he you know made no bones about it. You know, he believes. So let me I ask this, guys. What play, what players then, Johnny? Do you think are in this squad? that he is talking about when he says there's still a lot of work to do. Richarlison. Um, Richarlison, Gil. Um, I don't believe he... Listen, I don't believe he would want Hoybier to go. And I, I, I do believe it because he's mentioned him so many times post-game about the effect he has and what a good player he is and a professional. So I don't believe he's there, but I think he's going anyway. Um, Oliver Skip. Again, he's a trier, but, you know, I think there's quite a few players. I think, listen, for me, I think you could upgrade on, on Kulu. I mean, that would be, that would do you be. Think Kulu, do you think Kulu might be one of the guys that he no, wants No, I'm just saying, could you imagine? No, it's interesting, though. It's interesting. Could you imagine? You know, for me, um, I... Because that was contract a... was made permanent before Ange kicked the ball. Correct. And listen, for me, when you look at it, uh, I, I was a massive advocate. He can't play on the right. You've got to move him inside. That's where we're going to see the real Kulu. And he's let me down. He he did not deliver. He's been given that opportunity. You've got to grasp it with both hands. You look at Mainu last night. He's come on uh, uh, for England and he's grabbed his opportunity, he grabbed his opportunity for Man United. And mm. I think that's what football is all about. It's about chance and circumstance. Um but what would the fan reaction be if we sold him? Maybe not as bad if we came out, we bought, we sold him and we bought Nico Williams. Or we sold him and we bought a Neto or someone like that. So I think fans will be okay with it as long as we can see, as Dave said, about progression and upgrade on, on what we have. One thing I think we're all agreed on, our depth is not good enough. We do not have enough depth. Look, I, I think when you're looking at players that need to leave, look at the players that played in the Carabao Cup against Fulham. A lot of them, they'll be out of here. You look at some of the players that he's had to use through the injury crisis, and as soon as the injured players have come back and they're half fit, he's throwing them straight in. They're the players that are gone. They're the players he has no faith in. When it comes to Postacoglu from the fan base, Johnny's right. It's the fans that keep the club and everyone around it honest. You know, I have no problem with people criticising Ange Postacoglu because how do you expect to get better or improve if there's no criticism? Most people use criticism as a fuel to improve themselves right. and stuff like that. So that always has to happen. But where the criticism comes in is when things went sour, when he had to rely on players that he didn't trust to be in his first eleven. Where the criticism comes in is maybe some of his in-game management. That tells me he doesn't trust the players at his disposal on the bench and stuff like that. It's the same criticisms Arteta was getting, Klopp was getting and stuff like that. But you have to back it. You, you have to go with it. You can't keep chopping and changing directions because you'll never get out of this mess. At some point, you have to say, are we seeing enough? That 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 we can see. Okay, if we add more of what this manager would like, could it potentially make us challenge Liverpool, City, and stuff like that? I would argue yes. I'd argue I have seen enough. Like I said, he lost his thirty goal season as striker. He had a new goalkeeper changing guard for the first time in over a decade. He had a whole new backline and stuff like that. That's all a recipe for disaster. Are we sitting here today talking about a disaster or are we sitting here talking about minuscule things that we can improve on? And I'd argue the latter. So that for me shows that there's enough there to say this guy's the guy, go and give it an opportunity. Pochettino, many people would have said when he first came in, he's not your guy. 
But look how long he was here for. We, we, we backed him to a certain degree, but didn't push on when we really needed to. And for me, I think we're at that same point, and I've seen more than enough. Can I just say, I've just read, found the article. And it is hard these days to stay at one club for a long time. It's a tough one. If you ask me about my longevity, part of that process for me has been moving on after two or three years. I've mostly done it after success, but I know I found it's always better to move on. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That, that's the problem, right? That's that's what you're that's what you're dabbling and gambling with is the fact that when you sign a player for a manager, square pegs in round holes. How many times have we discussed this, Dave, over the last two years yeah. that I've known you? Or, or it's a constant thing with Tottenham. I'm yeah. sure it's a constant thing with most clubs outside of Liverpool, who have had Jurgen Klopp for seven years, outside of Everton, who had David Moyes for the longest time outside of Alex Ferguson at United, outside of Arteta at, at, um, at, at Arsenal. Uh, sorry, uh, Wenger at Arsenal. Outside of that, the average tenure of a manager is far shorter than the average contract of a player. And so if you're right. buying players to, to fit managers' needs, then you're going to, if you if you move from pillar to post, it's going to be a problem. So, and and, and andrew has got no track record with staying at a club for a long time. So That's it's why I be asked for balance. That's no, why no, I, 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 Johnny, for balance. I, I, I yeah. don't disagree with you at all. Yeah, I think that yeah. it's... But the players it's... we're signing, though, guys, right? You look at them over the last few years under Paratici, regardless of what manager they've been, they've been technical players that know how to handle the ball and stuff like that. They're, a lot of them have sort of been good characters and good eggs, you know? So Paratici is there to make sure that we're, you know, right. we are signing for after Ange Postacoglu, yes. But it's about bringing the right manager in to suit them players. And we've now got... You're 100% right. And that's right, what that. we have to look at. Yeah. So yeah. if he leaves... I mean, listen, let's be honest, right? I, I won't go into the details, but Conte wasn't a great fan of uh, Papa Sarr. He didn't think he, you know, tried to send him out on loan, right? The kid came back from the World Cup eager to please. And he said, I'm not interested. He went right. out and had that unbelievable game against uh, AC Milan, thrown into the deep end. And Next week, again. he was binned again, right? So Holy my point skip. is... Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I think the thing is that, um, you know, we need that balance. We need the vision of someone who can see great players. Listen, Bergvall could be unbelievable for next season, right? That He, he could be... Or oh, Ange could look at him and say, he's not what I want or need. Yeah, he might say, well, you know what? You know, he sat on the bench all season, right? Because he's not ready. Where a lot of the Spurs fans are thinking he is the messiah. It's a We're huge ask, ask to ask to jump boy. the Swedish league straight into the Premier League and hit the ground running. Correct. A huge ask. Look, Correct. I would I would hazard a lot of players in and around 18. Ange has absolutely no say on or nothing to do with. That's Tottenham pre-planning for when Ange leaves, for 100%. when the likes of Romero, Van der Ven and all them players maybe move on. That's Tottenham trying to plan ahead of that. The, 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 them sort of signings yeah, are... Dave, if, you're promising, if you're promising a, a bloke first-team football... Or to be in the first team squad so he doesn't go to Barcelona, then Ange has got a bit of a of, a, of an anchor around his neck in regards to that kind of promise, right? That is something that, you know, I, I agree with you that, that Tottenham have to fight on multiple fronts. They have to think about the future, the post Ange era, and they have to also find a way to to convince this guy to join us rather than someone else. The same with Dragasin. Yet well, Dragasin, I mean, Dragasin hasn't played a bloody minute really unless it's been offered to him because of an injury to van der ven and yet we had to convince him to join us rather than the by minute oh, he'll the come in and team. train with the first team squad you know he's probably better than a lot of the you know some of the other midfielders that are in the academy and stuff like that you look at the likes of jamie dolly dorrington they're still training with the first team squad but playing with the under 21s in games and stuff like that i think it's smart move by Bergval to sort of guarantee himself being trained with the first team because i've heard it from a lot of league of ireland players they struggle they get to play week in week out over here 18 19 20 they get brought over to England, they go straight into the academy setup, and they can never really make that adjustment back to go back through an academy and stuff because they've already got a taste of first team football. So I think right. it's smart by Bergval on that, and it'll only do him the world of good. You know, will we see him come straight in at the start? And that probably not. But when you look at what the kid's got, he's definitely got enough talent to be able to get some minutes in an FA Cup game or a Carabao Cup game and stuff like that. We're fighting on all four fronts. There's going to be a lot more game time to offer out next season than what there is this season, probably triple yeah. the amount. Can I ask you, Dave? I mean, you and I are both like very keen on the youth and everything. Mm. Do you believe that Ange really is going to embrace our youth setup? Um, Dave, I do. Do, you mind, do, you mind, do you mind if I just press pause on that? Yeah, uh, go just on. for a second, because it's a bit of a tangent. 
And I just want to quickly jump on. Yeah, go on. We need to get to, don't you? Stay on track. Yeah, there's a couple of super chats. And also, I've had to change the name of this show because we're already an hour and five minutes in. And the show was about how Tottenham <laughs> get to top four. I apologize about that. No, no, it's been a fun. I've, I've really enjoyed it. It's been fantastic. But the show's gone off. It always does. It always, I love it. <laughs> love it. But Drew Zill has come in with a super chat saying, this is a while back. Sorry, Drew. A great show. Smash the like, everyone. Does wonders for the show. Let's Burst Talk Show know you appreciate the content. Thank you very much, man. Member for nine months. Absolutely adore you, Drew. Thank and you're going to be on the show uh, later this week. Hopefully, I'll reach out to you today. I promise. He's you coming with you a few weeks ago, right? He was good. Yeah, he, he came on with um, with Alan, who's R Rakdos Madness. Yeah. And also Blake Devlin. I'm going to get the three, the three of them back on because mm -hmm. it was a really nice, chilled show. <coughs> Hopefully, Friday night. Uh, Drew Zilla, uh, come, Drew again uh, with a super chat. Thank you very much. He says, if you support Tottenham, Tottenham sounds like a uh, pasta. <laughs> Um, you have to accept that players will come and go. If we trust in Ange, then we have to allow him to move his pieces and build his squad. He's won everywhere. Give him time. On that note, let me just double check. What is the... Uh, we had 100 votes now. 96, 97 votes on... 300 the... people watching, nearly 400. Get your votes in. Yeah, 400 votes. Uh, sorry, there's 400 people watching nearly. Only 100 votes. Talking of which, there's also only 165 likes. Guys, we got to get that to 250. It's free to do. It really helps the channel out. It's the button with the thumb, guys. It's, it's, it's drum the thumb. Well, it is. I'm not asking you to do anything else. Just drum the thumb. Uh, but 87% says give Ange the keys. Give him what he wants, regardless of what that means. Love that. We're, everyone's backing Ange. Absolutely awesome. And Drew, you're absolutely online with that. You want to give him what he needs. Listen, if we're going to go for someone who's got a specific, highly high octane kind of gung ho approach then for it to be given the best chance of success you at least have to trust that he knows what he wants and i think it's so specific that he knows what he wants probably more than than any of us so i'm going to back him as well but there is that reservation as 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 johnny's pointing out that when you do sign a player for 5 years and he's probably going to be gone in two then are we then left with square pegs, round holes for the next guy. Hopefully the next guy won't be too different to Ange. Hopefully the next guy will be someone who plays at least a similar ethos, if not the same. But I appreciate that, Drew. And they come in with another one, man. Drew, I love you, buddy. Thanks very much. Is there an argument, many, is there an argument, many, that he's moved on to better himself? Mm. Now he's at possibly a top 20 European. This is about Ange. Yeah. It's a about top 20 European thing. thing. So now the chance to move is slimmer. Yeah, Dave, I'll let you answer this one, mate. Is Ange now at the peak of his powers? Is this where is, there's not many places he can go from here that are better than where Tottenham are? So yeah. does he have less ambitions from now on? Well, that's where I'm at with it. Every move he's made has been a step up. You know, and I think with, with Johnny's quotes, I think they're fair quotes to read out. But what I take from them is... Why would he stay at a club when he's been successful, you know, for five, six, seven, eight years and never try and make that step up, that progression? And I think that's why he's been quick to leave because he's always harnessed an, an ambition to get to the top of European football, to get into the Premier League and stuff like that. Now that I think he's here, or like Drew saying, I don't think there's many more places that, that he can really go from here that will, you know, advance his career in that regard and stuff like that. So I think now that he is here, I think you'll probably see him being here longer than two years, Providing that the board, you know, sort of match what he wants to do here. If they start pushing back on it, and and strikes me as the guy that would sort of walk away and stuff like that. So um, I agree with Drew. I think now that he's at Tottenham, now that he's sort of close to the pinnacle, I, I think you'll see him here longer than two years. What do you think, Johnny? Do you agree? I know. With that? I, 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 listen, I, I do. I just think I think you hit the nail on the head here. I look. I, I don't have a problem back in Ange. I'm oh saying, no, we know you don't. We know yeah, you don't. But 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 back the percentage. But my point here is this will be pointless if we yet again make the first the fundamental mistake. If we get rid of him, or if he leaves, then we must get like an onslaught or a, a Gallardo who hmm. play progressive, attacking, exciting football. Uh, we must keep that because then we have half a chance with the players that are there yeah. that they will be suitable for the uh, for, for the team. We we will know we've we've been carrying far too much deadwood in the squad, and I, I think we all know and we all feel there's not enough depth. We can definitely improve this team, and that there, there are many many positions. I don't think Madison is the answer personally because I believe he, he's going to be injured constantly. He won't last a full international season 
uh, European season of Premier League. So we have to have a top, top quality backup or someone that's going to put Madison on the bench. Why can't Madison be on our bench yep. fighting yeah. to get on? You know? That's yeah, he needs competition. Correct. I want to be there too. Um, George, thank you very much for the super chat, mate. Good show. I appreciate that. Thank you as well, Drew, for the uh, for the super chats, buddy. I really appreciate it. Well, we're going to move on from the uh, Ange, kind of. I'm not going to. You know, I'm not going to do the Luton review. I'm going to change the thumbnail. We're going to forget Luton for the time being. We're going to talk about. And we're not even going to do the top four race. I, I've got a few other stories I want to talk to you about. I want to get your take because it's quite a passionate show, and I really appreciated it. So I want to ask you this, and. Uh, where are we going to get it up first and foremost? Tottenham defender Christian Romero has expressed the desire to play for Argentina at the Olympics this summer. The men's football at the Paris <laughs> Games runs like from him. July. <laughs> What's that? He's aged. What's happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> Is that his missus? <laughs> uh, it's an under-23s tournament, but each country is allowed to select three older players. He's basically said, I never had the chance to be in the Olympic Games. I would love to. Obviously, it doesn't depend on me, but if you want to take me, I am available for the Argentine national team. I continue with the same enthusiasm and desire as always to continue doing things well at the club to continue having the possibility of being here. In a nutshell, it's slightly different <laughs> to, uh, to Richarlison's comments where he's saying I put country before club it's always country first for me at least um, Romero is acknowledging that he does everything he best everything he can best for the club but Johnny we spoke about this last week um, this summer is going to be ridiculously busy you've got the Euros you have the FFP negotiations left and right you've got the pre-season tour over in Korea in Australia or wherever else we're going over there you've got Bayern Munich at home middle of August Copper course, America, Copper, Copper America, which run, coincides with essentially the same the same timelines as the Euro, so no concern there. But it's still a massive complication. And then now, of course, you've you've got the Olympics, which we forgot about. Which, if he was to be selected for, would mean that he didn't participate in any preseason at all. He was with the Copper America Argentinian team for the first part of it, and then he disappeared for the Olympics, and he wouldn't come back until the fifth game of the Premier League. Is it okay for our, like, uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm saying, sorry, no. You're not 22, 21. You're not 20. I remember the 2012 British team that had, like, half a dozen English players, a couple of Welsh players. I don't think Scottish players made the made the thing. But there was no, it was all kids. It was a kids it's 21 horrible. thing. Romero shouldn't be talking about the Olympics, should he? And, and, and if, he, if he is, if he's allowed to, does this in any way kind of, like, put a little black blemish against his name regarding his passion for Tottenham, his priorities. What's going on? We pay his wages, right? Shout no, out to out, Richie. Or, or Romero. Listen, it's not a problem. Look, for me, it's not a problem. Uh, if he wants to do it, so be it. Listen, Richarlison, Richarlison went to the Olympics and won a gold medal for Brazil. Uh, he puts it down as one of the highlights of his career. Listen, Romero's a winner, right? He's a winner. And if we're saying our squad is as good as it's going to be and we're going out to buy yet another centre-back, which Ange has mentioned, uh, he's, he's stated that, you know, so we go into the season with Dragusin and um, and what's name? It, it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, no, it doesn't have to be what it is. He's not 20, he's not 18 trying to make his career. I understand that. I what understand are we doing that. here? He wants Olymp to... The Olympics is for amateurs. It's not for real. It's not for professional footballers. It's ridiculous. But it is though. Can it I just shouldn't tell be. You, do you know how many players are going to be out in 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 the Olympics that Spurs probably will be looking at? On top of what's out in Copper America, on top of what's out in the Euros, and this is what I'm saying to you, with FFP having to be done before the 30th of June, and Spurs and other clubs trying to exploit weak positions before that date. They can't do it 30th of June. They're already being the bloody, um, they're already being the camp. So you have between the 14th of May and the 1st of June, probably. And those, but those players are taking a breather for a couple of days off. They're going to go two to, weeks. to Dubai. You got yeah. two weeks to get your business done. Right, it's going to be a mad, 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 and Ange wants it all done early. Would you I be okay with Romero if Romero was selected for Argentina, Johnny? Would you be okay with it in the Olympics? Very didn't go. 
Are you okay with it? <laughs> if he's selected and he's going, he's going. He's going. Wow. My point That's here a, is... Are you okay with it? Would you be sitting there going, come on, mate, we got a Champions League game and you're going to miss. Can I just tell you, we're what going we to here? Asia. We're going to Asia, right? We're going to Asia the, when they're more or less finishing the Copa America and the... Um, and the what you call it, and the and the yeah. Euros, we're going to be going out to Asia with kids. We're not even going to. It's going to be another messed up, screwed up, badly planned pre-season tournament, right? With half the bloody team missing, right? Poor planning. It's all about the Wonga. It's all about the money. It's all about the oh, money. Oh, I get but, that. Okay, look, you're, you're, you're not going to give me a straight answer. Is it okay with you if he goes to the Olympics? Yes or no? Straight answer. I prefer I he would not go. No, no, still no politician's answer. Is he a donut for going to the Olympics? Yes or no? I, I, I'm going to take the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I would prefer he didn't go, but I can't deny that, you know, as a professional, as a professional sportsman, you know, he's won, he's won, um, He's won best footballer, best defender of the year in Italy. He's won the World Cup. He's won the Copper America. He's won the World Cup. And now don't forget how Olympics. don't forget he took two weeks off before Tottenham of oh, Tottenham season to get himself ready for he it. He wants to go with our mate Alejo, fly off to uh, fly off to uh, France. It's only up the road. It's only up no, the road. It's, no, not he's... Like he's, it's not like he's going to Timbuktu. He's in France. Dave, Maybe is it okay with you if Romero? Pisses off for the first six weeks of the season. Maybe you can come back and forth and play in both. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Right. Look, I'm not okay with it personally. I'm one of them. The Olympics is, uh, you know, it's not really a really sort of recognized international tournament. It is out in <laughs> South America. The Olympics is big. Their teams yeah. have always took part in the football. Over here in Europe, it's sort of a bit disrespected a lot. Um, Look, the Olympics are for sprinters, weightlifters and all that shit. It's not for football. I don't want to see Romero there. I think it's a waste of his time. I can understand he wants to get every international honour, you know, you add the Olympics to that because they recognise it out there and stuff like that. But then you're also talking about the holiday and the break that he's going to need off the back of the Olympics from being in action all summer long. So for me, I think um, on this one, I think he, you know, Tottenham have been good to him in the past and stuff like that. I think now it's time Tottenham put their foot down and say, Romero, you ain't going anywhere. Get your head in the game. Kick off to the Correct. start of the Premier League. We know how much of a good start we got off to last year. We want to get off to a similar start. We've also got hopefully Champions League games factoring into that. You need to get off to a good start. We need you here. Now, if we go and sign a world-class centre-back in the summer, I'd say, OK, maybe you can let him go because we have enough to get away with it. But with the current options that are presently available, he cannot go anywhere. Yeah, you want he Lloyd Kelly, don't go anywhere. You, can't you, go you, anywhere. I don't care if we sign a world-class centre-back. I don't care. Sorry, bro. You're 25 years old. Like <laughs> the, the, what, the the Olympics is for amateur. It's an amateur. It's an amateur event. Hang on, Andrew's <laughs> selling him. He's one on the list. He might be on the list. If he's you know what, he might be on the list. Do you know what, mate? He might be on the list. There's a lot of rumours that he might be out of here. So we'll find out. He might be on that list. Real Madrid, Barcelona. 100%. 100%. Listen, we're going to move on briefly. I just wanted to get your take on that. I know that Johnny sat on the fence. He's got splinters up his shit pipe <laughs> for the next for the next month. <laughs> <laughs> Dave has come out and said it's not okay. I appreciate the sincerity. There's a couple more super chats I want to get to, and then we've got a couple more stories. Guys, I had so many ambitions to go through the kind of make-believe fixes. We'll have to do that another night. Maybe uh, on Friday night, we're going to do the members phoning show. The reason why we can do the members phoning show is it's always open. But listen, we did it a couple of weeks ago and only three people wanted to come on. Blame was one of them alongside Drew and alongside uh, Rakdos Madness. And I had a wonderful chat with you guys. But listen, Blaine is always coming on here, being the most generous of all. Uh, I mean, everyone's generous. Everyone's generous with their time and their attention and stuff. But Blaine is incredibly generous with his... Um, his access to the channel and he's offered five more super chat uh, five more memberships rather i'm not sure who's got them i'll tell you potato stew look man uh pd1347 chris loney and frank marcel st are the recipients so make sure you get on Friday. hey it's sean any chance i could become a member well <laughs> make sure you get yourself in the comment section and uh, <laughs> uh maybe you can 
Um, guys, Blaine, thank you so much Every, to those people that Dave just called out. Make sure you say uh, thank you to, to Blaine. Blaine, I look forward to. I'm going to see you on Friday night. We're doing the member show on Friday, but I'm definitely going to get the three of you guys back on on a party on a on a panel show as well. Absolutely love you, Blaine. He's also coming with a super chat saying, "Big up you bunch of feckers. Hope you're all good." Question: Richie starts Saturday? Yes or no? Yeah. Dave, unresoundedly, yes. Look. I've tried to highlight it this season, right? Everyone with Sonny makes the argument that he's not the same player he once was. He has to play down the middle because he's not getting the same stats off the left. But no one wants to talk about why he's not getting the same stats off the left because he doesn't have Harry Kane and that link-up play there. Harry Kane was crucial to Sonny on that left-hand side. You can put the ball into Kane. He spins. As soon as he gets the ball, Sonny knows, just runs straight in behind. That ain't happening this season, so he's had to adapt his game. So that's why his numbers aren't the same off the left-hand side. People are trying to parrot Son to be a striker. Look back at his career. He is not a striker. He has constantly played off the left-hand side. Right. I take the arguments he's getting older and stuff, but I've tried to highlight. He, you can play Son against teams that play high line. It's where he's effective. Teams that play people behind the ball, Son gets lost, a.k.a. that Fulham game. Couldn't couldn't get him into the game whatsoever. That's where Richie comes in because you can put balls into the box. You can get him to go and header it. That's not – when people talk about Son, that's not the strength they talk about with him. Richie gives you that different thing and you get Son. That Fulham game was crying out for Son to get on the ball in the space that Brennan Johnson was and making stuff happen. That's where he needs to be for Tottenham Hotspur and that's where he needs to play. Get Richie back up front. Early uh, on in the amazing. season, we made that change. After the Chelsea game, we went on a bit of a, a, a shit patch. Son played up front for three or four games after that. We made the change against Wolves and it rejuvenated us. For me, you have to play him through the middle. Get Richarlison back up there. Right, for me, um, especially in a game like this, I, I keep saying it, right, uh, Son's got no physicality for tough teams, you know, and a game like Luton, they're decimated with injuries. Um, they're there for the taking, but you need Richarlison up front <laughs> to deal with that, uh, those yep. defenders. And don't forget, you know, they've got some very big uh, units up front who are coming, coming mm. back for uh, corners and set pieces and stuff. Without his height and without his um, shithousery, I think, um, you know, we, we, would, we would be lacking. Um, bearing in mind, you know, we, we struggled uh, to score a goal um, in the first game. I mean, we got the goal in the end um, right by us, if you remember, uh, Shawnee, uh, that, yeah. that goal. But um, no, I, I, I think he has to start. He, he needs it. Is this the Johnny that called Ben White Orange Bay? Orange. <laughs> is, that yeah. what, is that you? Agent Orange, yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, yeah, well, you know what? I've got I've got 15 more stories we could talk about or I could throw finish one on the... There. Let's throw one in there. Go on. Oh, Charlie, you forgot this one. Yeah, I've got so exactly. I'll come back to this one. Hey, user, thank you so much for the super chat, my man. Really appreciate you. Don't forget, some of the players were bought in for the Conte system and how they have adapted to And We need to trust our manager. Look at Jurgen Klopp. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, mate. Listen, I think that I'd, I'd love Ange. I want it to succeed. I want to see this system be given the tools that it needs to play out, even if it's just an experiment to see whether or not this guy's coming in with a specific set. I think if if you're you know, if, if you're trying to lose weight, but you can't lose, can't leave the house, and then you have the option to get a treadmill, but you go, no, sorry, you can't have a treadmill. All you're allowed to do is, um, you know, to Shot eat. runs up the stairs. Yeah, it's it's not the same. Right, you got you got to give the got to give the if the task is A, then you have to give them whatever uh, A requires to uh, to get it done. And I, so I do want to see Ange get what he needs. However, I am also like Johnny cognizant of the fact that managers don't hang around very long so the only thing i would argue if we're going to give him the keys then tottenham also need a succession plan for Ange. Right. Tottenham need like like brighton like like yeah. everybody else who are smart they'll have a succession plan for the next manager as much as they will for the next left winger or right winger and so i really hope that if tottenham are going to hand over the keys to Ange and say whatever you want and whatever Paratici and Langer can find and whatever the data brings up, if we can all agree that this is the best for what we can afford and all that stuff, then I'm all for it. And I'm all for selling some fan favorites if they don't fit the model, as long as there is also a plan for what happens when 
and when Ange leaves, whoever the next guy is. I don't know who that person is, but I'd like it, I'd like to think that we've got that thing in motion as well, so that the next manager can inherit the next group of players, the same group of players, and work with them, and that we don't continually need a rebuild every 100%. time we get a new manager. Hundred percent. That's that's imperative, I think, for me. Imperative. Yeah. Um. All right. So do what? Do you want to talk about Luton? Last fifteen minutes, guys. Do you want to talk about Luton, or do you want to talk about the the last couple of sort of um, transfer room? Let's talk. Let's talk about Luton. Let's talk about Luton. How do we beat Luton, Johnny? How do we beat Luton? I, I, th I don't think we're going to have a problem the weekend. Um, I think we will smash them mm. purely from the point of view that they are absolutely riddled with injuries, um, and um, I think that will play into our our, our hands. But we have to score early. Um, we haven't scored in the first half since. Oh, I can't remember now. I, I, I can't remember I how many games. Two of our last fifteen goals have come in the first half. I think it's like seven, seven games of football I haven't scored in the first half, Johnny. Yeah, it's. I can't remember how many games or how long ago. Listen, look. As far as I'm concerned, since December the tenth, we've only played two games of football. That's Newcastle and Aston Villa. Apart from that, we've struggled. But we need to score early. We need to demoralise them, choke them and finish them off. Um, and then I hope they stay up. But I, I want us to dismantle them and then rest the players because the big game, the big picture is West Ham on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. Tuesday? Wednesday. 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 Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, is it? Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, we've got Saturday, Tuesday. Saturday, yeah. Tuesday and then the following I'm going Monday. to West Ham. And, and then, then the following Monday. Tuesday. Oh, no. I think it's Tuesday. Oh, Let me double check for you. It is. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm, I'm double booked. I've got my birthday dinner with my dad on Tuesday and West Ham tickets. Someone, someone's going to have to. Yeah, Tuesday, eight to fifteen. <laughs> Quarter past eight. Wow. So you might be able to sneak in dinner and get there now. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. My you dad could do brunch. Problems. You could do brunch in the match. <laughs> what we want is a fly from the whole day. We want Mend to vlog the all day. You from your dinner rushing to the West Ham Stadium. I can't go because they don't like me. Damn, I'm going to have to figure that out. All right, so um, let me ask you this, though, about Luton. Uh, Johnny, I'll take your point. But Adebayo up top, powerful runner. Luton Town have got been injured. A, a habit. Huh? He's been injured, though, isn't he? Morris, he's been, been no injury. Morris is... Uh, Clinton Carl Morris. Morris and, and, yeah, Carl Morris. And, Morris and, I think Adebayo is back, though, isn't he? Uh, well, he's he's back, but he's he's nursing. But I I, I sort of um, Ross. Barkley, oh, he's injured. He's injured. He's injured. He's injured. Okay. Yeah, he's injured. Uh, but okay. he's he's oh, he's good. lurking. He's lurking. They've got a lot of injuries. Chong's out. Uh, he got injured again. They got a lot. They're carrying a lot of injuries. Hopefully, they any none of them will excuse be back. at all. Is there any excuse at all for anything other than a dominant zero. performance? Absolutely zero. I expect four goals. Anything less than four nil. Um, I, I will be taking umbrage with. They are there for the taking right now. A fully fit Luton team, I think, would give us a lot of trouble physically. But there's no excuses, um, none at all. I didn't want any excuses for Fulham either, although I knew, you know, I did say to you, Aston Villa, all good, but come back to me if we do the same to Fulham. And we didn't. We didn't. West Ham's the they... game. West Ham is the main game. We oh, we'll, 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 that's, that's for next week's. That's for next week's. Uh, <laughs> Devil's advocate, Dave Luton is. He's, we have to see something better. We have. We have to. We, I mean, we haven't put the sword any team to the sword this season, bar a couple, and even those teams, you know, were riddled with injuries. And there was much, even the Newcastle. Everyone points to the Newcastle game. They have know, no one there. <laughs> ben Davies doesn't put that slide tackle in in the fifth minute. True. You know, <laughs> One nil down, different game, right? So yeah, I don't know. How 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 confident are you, Dave? I think this is one gonna gonna be one of the ones where we slap them. Uh being brutally honest. I think I think I don't know why I, I woke up sort of this week with a four-nil scoreline in mind. Um, you know, it's that sort it's of bad. feeling I get. I look at Luton, 
look at their place. I know a lot of other teams have struggled, but we smashed them. We bet them with 10 men, and we should have been four or five up by the time that sending off happened. Richardson missed a couple of sitters earlier on in that game that day and stuff. So for me, I don't really envisage too much of a problem to beat uh, Luton. And I, I think we will beat them. They're a team with a lot of injuries at the minute, like Johnny alluded to. Um, and it's a lot of a bigger pitch. If it was at home at their place, I'd maybe I wouldn't feel as confident. But our place, it's a huge pitch. Move the ball yeah. around with a bit of purpose, zip it around, get them running around, you know. And I, I, I think we should have enough to go on and beat them, uh, you know, comfortably three or four nil, and then look ahead for Crystal Palace. What I would say is, or sorry, West Ham. But what I would say is, might not get the starting lineup that many people are thinking. You know, I think some of the guys might be out back for Tuesday night. I, 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 I tend okay. to agree. I think uh, you might even see Brian Gill on the bench. Um, not that he'll get any minutes, but he's just on the bench. You know? Yeah, have a look at that. Have a look at that, Brian. Eh? This is what you could have had. Yeah. <laughs> well, how, Dave, extrapolate out on that. What, what sort of team are you expecting to see then? Um, I think you might see Dragusen play. I think one of either Van de Ven or Romero will be held back. Probably Van de Ven held back for Tuesday off the back of his injury. Potentially, you might see Emerson come in for one of either Poro or Doji. Um, midfield, I think you might see this. I think you might see a, a Sar, Basuma, and Madison, but I think you might see changes earlier on in there. And then up front, I think you know, I think you will go with. I think Sonny will start. I think perhaps. Uh, I think Richardson probably come in. I don't know. I think Kulu might be dropped to the bench. I think you might see a Johnson uh, sort of brought in. I think, you know, a couple of players held back. but we're, we're, And whoever's not held back will be taken off early. I think the mission is go out and get the job done early. Let's get you off and let's get you ready for Tuesday night. I, I would say to you that maybe they dress Brenda after, you know, two big games, but he was out of breath after <laughs> 60 minutes. He was, taken <laughs> off. he was taken off after 70 minutes. So, um I'm surprised he came off after 70 minutes playing for Wales, were you not? Would you wear a Johnson jersey if we got you on with his name and number? Of course I match? would. Of course I would. <laughs> of course I would. Did you get a Johnson 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 Johnson? I'm here to be, I'm here for him to come out and absolutely smash it and be one of the world's top attacking players. Okay. Uh, I would like to see him physically being able to last 90 minutes. Um <laughs> Listen, Sean, you were with me. You were with me at Wolves, mate, where he was huffing and puffing after twenty mate, minutes. Mate. Dude, I was the I was the guy. I was the guy who said on a stream with Henry. I said it backstage. I was like, I think the man vapes. And then Henry Wright went and put out a video on TikTok saying, "Yeah, Brennan Johnson vapes." It's no other explanation. <laughs> the guy puffed. He's absolutely. Exa- I, I didn't. I don't. I'm not on TikTok, so I never saw it. <laughs> Suddenly, it's on Twitter, and there's a hundred thousand people that are telling that, that Hem- telling Henry that he's an absolute moron for accusing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't do anything. I, didn't, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> but listen, look. You know, he was he was pulled off after seventy minutes in a crucial game. This is a forty-seven million pound. No one else in that squad costs. Anywhere near forty-seven. I think, million I think Brennan Johnson's a good player. I think he's going to come. I think he's going to no, get no, better. I think he's saying, a slow burn. I think he's a slow burner of a player. I think he's going to he get better off? and better. Sure. What I'm saying is, you're the forty-seven million golden diamond. That you're the diamond in the rough in that Wales team. Why are you being taken off after seventy minutes? What was he doing? I didn't watch the game. Maybe someone can fill us in on the blanks. Yeah. Well, we got tomorrow. We have uh, Guy Masterson. Coming back on, um, and he is, uh, I think he's a, he's a Welsh man. I think a proud Welsh man. I think he talks a little bit like Tom Jones. And so he's going to... Bloody marvellous. Bloody unbelievable he is. And so we're going to have, uh, we're, I'm going to get the uh, the rundown on Brendan Johnson's performance uh, Guy tomorrow. Masterson, it sounds like the guy from Guys and Dolls. Oh, that's Guy Masterson, isn't it? Yeah, you were on with Guy. You you know Guy. You you, yes. you dropped the same you yes. dropped the same joke backstage last time, that's Johnny. Right. That's my idea, but I couldn't remember. That's it. Guy's a nice guy. Bloody marvelous. Yeah, yeah he was a nice guy. So what are we good saying guy. then, guys? Four nil. Four nil for me. Four nil for Dave. Sounds like a bet. Where are you? Where, where, what's your score prediction, Sean? I said three one. But you know what? I said three. I put I put the video two, across two. to you, Dave. For your to Tottenham, I said, to- <laughs> Dave, I, I put the video across saying, oh, Luton are a tricky team. you got that Adebayo at the top end of the pitch. you got Doughty on the right. 
I said all these things, and apparently maybe maybe they're all half of them are all injured. So well, you, might you have want to a chance to my, redo my it quickly after this because I haven't recorded yet. I'm going to do it after this. You have a chance to redo it if you want. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll redo it then. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that's watching, if you go over to the Irish Hotspur link in the description, I'll put it up in a minute, and then you see the video. Then if I say four nil. Now, I don't want you calling me out for changing my mind after this show, okay? I want it to be fair game. Um, guys, listen, wonderful show, as always. I, I had 15 other uh, other topics to talk about. I could talk to you for hours, but uh, we got to keep these shows quite quite uh, quite brief, relatively brief. Um, Dave, <laughs> what... We don't do brief. We don't do, we don't do brief, but we don't, no. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what's coming up, mate? Thank you so much for coming on. What's coming up on the Irish Hotspur? The link's coming now for everybody. Make sure you get over there and uh, first help of all, I apologise to you for completely derailing the show. Uh, the show, Shani, you know, uh, complete different you agenda. <laughs> you know, because oh, I a, loved it. I absolutely it's loved it. Mate. it was, no, no, it's a brilliant show. I thought it was a great show. I loved it. Talking uh, about uh, Andrew's uh, comments. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, if those of you who didn't enjoy it, I do apologise. But uh, look, uh, you can find me over at the Irish Hotspur. Um, we were linked to Fet Festi Ebiselli. People want to have a hear my opinion on him. He's the Irish right right back, very similar to what Adoji is. The guy at Udinese that Tottenham are looking at on the right hand side. I hear my thoughts on that. But also, there's a show that we done out there with Flav Bateman from the Fighting Cock. So uh, look out for that as well. Nice. And Johnny, my man. Uh, guys, first of all, the link is right there. You can see it on the screen. Just click it. If you're new around these here parts and you haven't seen Dave's channel before, just click the link. It will take you to a new tab. Hit the subscribe button and go and check out the, the great content he has over there. Especially the, um, well, everything. But I like his uh, his his loan, loan roundups on a Monday morning. Always yeah, they're good. always good, Dave. Always good. Appreciate it. Always and then, of course, we've got Johnny, who I've been trying to convince to have a channel. And I'm also thinking about... Yeah, getting Johnny to join uh, join the Sean Butler TV, we have to rebrand that and do our. Yeah. You know, we have. I've, I've got. We got to talk about this stuff in the background. But Johnny, for the time being, mate, where can people find you? you What's can going find on on Twitter? Me on uh, Twitter, where uh, I'll be posting uh, all sorts of uh, stuff. Some that people agree with, and stuff people don't agree with. Right, but you know, <laughs> I stick to my opinion, and you know, so be it. Um, Listen, I love coming on this show, uh, Devil's Advocate, um, because I feel like, you know, the football, you know, if we were down the pub. For me, I just view this as being down the pub. Mm, that's all it is. Well, it literally is like for me. The old days. This is not alcoholic today, but this is <laughs> yeah. literally it's down the pub. like the old days of sitting there. That's where you <laughs> went there, to your mates, and you chewed the mm. cud, and you spoke about it, and you agreed, and you disagreed. And that's what it's about, you know. I'm not Ange out. I want Spurs to win. I want us to be successful. I love to Ange to be holding the, the trophy up, saying it is what it is, mate. All right? But um, let's let's see where the journey goes. But uh, you can find me on um, on uh, obviously on my oh, Twitter. On. I've got to hear. I've got to hear. Yeah, sorry, on my sorry, Twitter. Sorry. And there, um, there we go down there. Johnny H thirty two thirty two. So give us a follow. Just click the link. Click the link. If you're and on if Twitter, you, click that you, link right now. And then get over there and press the follow button, and then you can find all of his Instagram stuff as well. Yeah, if you if you get a chance, if you're on Instagram, I'm trying to build that back up again. Um, but uh, you also find me on Tottenham on tour. We'll be on Sunday about half past twelve after the Luton game, uh, where we do Angie management. But uh, yeah, love to start the show. Uh, I think we need to do one. Hundred percent, mate. I told you about it. Definitely. And Dave. All right, guys. Always, bud. We uh, we will leave it there. Like like, please make sure you hit the like button. Smash Even if you're on your way out, just smash the like button. We're gonna smash Luton like we're gonna smash the like button after this. Hit the subscribe as well. Get over to Dave. Get over to Johnny. Links in the descriptions. Links are also in the chat. We'll see you on the next time. And as always, make sure you hit tomorrow oh, as well. Three o'clock tomorrow with uh, with Guy and with Brian Timlin, another Irish man. And then we're replacing this guy. And get him on as well. So uh, like, subscribe, and comment, guys. As always, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you. Thanks, already.